Hi, welcome to Your Great Journey. Each week, we offer you brief tips, techniques, and insights to help you move in positive directions and master big change. For more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W E T W A R E M E D I A.com. Today we're sharing an excerpt from Dr. David Carbonell's audiobook, Panic Attacks Workbook A Guided Program for Beating the Panic Trick. In this audiobook, Dr. David Carbonell explains the vicious cycle of habitual responses that lead to debilitating attacks, and he offers detailed instructions to help you stop this process and free yourself from the cycle of panic attacks. Introduction This is an audio workbook for people with panic attacks and phobias. There's good news and bad news about panic attacks and the phobias that usually accompany them. Let's take the bad news first. The bad news is that panic is a devious, insidious trick that can make you a prisoner in your own life, home, and head. It can intimidate you into abandoning the activities and situations that used to be a part of your life, like driving, air travel, public speaking, shopping in large stores, socializing, traveling freely away from your home, and many other ordinary activities. And it does this to millions of people around the world. Even as it does this to millions of people, it also leaves them with the impression that they're the only one to have this strange problem. Nothing could be further from the truth. But when people think that panic is some uniquely personal problem that they have created, rather than a disorder that affects millions of people around the globe, they tend to feel ashamed or embarrassed and retreat into a shell of shame and secrecy. The good news is that it's only a trick. It's a very effective trick, certainly, and takes a lot of work to overcome, but it's just a trick. People can and do overcome this trick, and I'm going to show you how you can. Why do I call it a trick? Not just because it fools you into thinking that you're in immediate danger of a personal catastrophe like death, insanity, or terrible humiliation. Not only because it intimidates you into giving up so many ordinary activities you used to enjoy and take for granted. Those are terrible tricks that can rob your life of joy and meaning, but bad as they are, they're not the worst part of panic. The worst part of the panic trick is that it brainwashes you into acting and thinking in precisely the ways that make the problem worse rather than better. It tricks you into using all your personal strengths and intelligence in ways that produce a more chronic and difficult problem rather than the recovery you seek. It uses your desire to feel safe, to trick you into staying stuck. I'm going to show you what to do about it. This book will expose the trick and take you, step by step, through the process of recovery. When people first experience panic attacks, they don't really know what they're up against and they have a hard time finding out. They don't know if they have a disease, a damaged heart, a breathing problem, a chemical imbalance, an emotional problem, a mental problem, or what. They may go from doctor to doctor, test to test, trying to find an answer. Along the way, they become fearful and confused. It often seems that the harder they try to put it behind them, the more it persists. They eventually come to believe one or both of two misleading explanations for their failure to get better. Either they think they're too weak or troubled or defective in some way to recover, or they think the problem is so difficult that recovery is impossible. Both of these beliefs are untrue. This is a very treatable problem, and people can get over it. So, why do so many people have so much trouble solving it? The answer is that they don't find out that panic attacks literally trick them into thinking and acting in precisely the ways that strengthen and maintain the panic. They keep falling for the trick. Even when they recognize they're being fooled somehow, they keep falling for it. Sometimes... When you've been fooled for a long time, you start to feel so pessimistic and bitter that you no longer hold out hope for a recovery. That's a tragedy because this is a very treatable problem. I'm a psychologist who specializes in helping people with anxiety. This book incorporates most of what I've learned in nearly 20 years of helping people overcome panic and phobias. 
I've had a lot of training in those years, and I've learned a lot from my own fear of heights, but the most valuable lessons about how to help people recover from panic have come from my clients. This opportunity to create a workbook brings the process full circle, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to pass on what I've learned. I remember distinctly how my education about panic began. In 1984, I was interning in the mental health clinic at Heinz Veterans Hospital near Chicago. I was a very green intern, conducting an intake session with a man who became increasingly annoyed with me as I clumsily tried to collect all the information the federal government and my supervisor required. Because he was so irritable, I asked him if I had offended him somehow. He told me that he was a long-term patient at the clinic who, because he had missed two appointments with his psychiatrist, was demoted to the status of new patient and had to go through the intake process all over again. His punishment for missing two appointments was having to talk to me, and he asked if I would please get it over with so he could get his medication. I finally got to the part of the interview when I asked him to describe his problem. He said, panic attacks. Since the form contained several lines for me to record his answer, I dutifully asked him to tell me more, to which he replied, panic attacks. You know what a panic attack is, don't you? Unfortunately for me, I didn't. I must have overslept the day it was discussed in graduate school. I could tell it had something to do with fear, but that was the extent of my knowledge. I was sorely tempted to act like I knew, but I figured he'd see through that, and he was already mad at me, and I still needed to get enough information from him to complete the forms in a way that would satisfy my supervisor, who was a bit of a stickler for detail. So I braced myself and told him the truth. Well, the truth is, I don't really know what a panic attack is. But wait, I said as he got up to leave. You need me to sign these papers so you can get your medication, right? He nodded, the way you might to encourage a child to explain about a broken lamp. Well, I said, if you'll stay here and teach me some about panic attacks, I'll sign your papers and we'll both be happy. He did. He gave me an earful. Later, my supervisor gave me an earful as well because I spent so much time on one intake. But it was worth it because that was the start of my education about panic disorder. While I'd like to be able to say that he came back to see me and I was able to help him get off his medication and resume a full active life, unfortunately I never saw him again. He got me interested in panic though and that started me on a career path that's been immensely satisfying, helping people recover from panic attacks. So if you're out there listening to this, sir, thanks for helping me get started. My approach is largely based on cognitive behavioral treatment methods called CBT. CBT is generally considered to be the treatment of choice for panic and anxiety disorders. But all too often, when people try to use CBT on their own in a self-help format, they get disappointing results. I think the reason is that they think of the CBT methods as a form of protection from panic and try to use them that way. Using CBT methods or anything else to protect yourself from panic only serves to perpetuate the panic trick. In this book, I will show you how to avoid that common mistake how to defuse the panic trick, and get the results you seek. Many of my suggestions may make you think, I never would have thought of doing that, or that's pretty much the opposite of what I've been doing. You may raise your eyebrows or even laugh out loud at a suggestion that seems surprising or bizarre. That's usually a good sign. If you keep thinking and acting the same way you did before listening to this book, you're likely to stay the same. My job is to promote positive change. So sometimes I may ask you a dumb question. Sometimes I may ask you to do or think about things that you would rather avoid. Sometimes I'll ask you to try an experiment that seems really silly. Sometimes I'll ask questions that may seem blunt or insensitive. In short, sometimes I may say and do things that would be considered rude or odd in a friendship or other kind of social relationship. That's because I'm trying to help you find your way out of the panic trick. I mention this because my approach may sometimes feel unsettling because I'm challenging you to think about things in a different way. Don't make snap judgments and don't be in a hurry. When you have a strong reaction to something I've said here, it probably indicates an opportunity for change and a good time to check out all your assumptions. A person with chronic panic attacks and phobias needs to think and act differently in order to recover. If nothing in this book challenges or confronts or confuses you, If you instantly agree with everything I've written, without reservation or apprehension, then either you've already achieved a good recovery, 
or I haven't written a very useful book. But if you focus with me on the phenomena of panic attacks and phobias, I'll show you how they work, how they trick you, why you have them, and, most importantly, what you can do to get over them and regain your freedom. You won't find anything about medication in this audiobook. Medication can be helpful to some people, but that's not what this audiobook is about. I'm going to show you how you can recover from panic attacks and live happily and freely without medications. You can recover from panic attacks and phobias. Hope to see you at the mall, on the expressway, or in the airport. How to use this audiobook. This book is organized into four sections. The first is an introduction, designed to help orient you to the approach I use and guide you through some preliminary steps before starting to work. Part 1 will help you understand precisely what the panic trick is, how it works, and most importantly, how you find evidence of it in your own life and behavior so you can begin undoing it. The work part of the workbook starts in this section, where I ask you to do some writing and complete some tasks, and continue throughout the rest of the book. Part 2 shows you how to prepare the way for recovery. It introduces a number of ways you can make yourself a better candidate for recovery and make success more likely even before you start the desensitization and exposure part of the program. Part 3 details how to design and use your own desensitization and exposure program for panic attacks and phobias. Part 4 offers additional detail and methods for overcoming four phobias commonly associated with panic attacks, the fears of flying, public speaking, driving, and claustrophobia, and the related disorder of social phobia. This book is packed with ideas and suggestions. Most of them are counterintuitive, the opposite of what you might suppose, so there's a lot to think about and absorb. Here are a few suggestions to help make your work productive. 1. Listen to a chapter at a time. If you don't have enough time to listen to a complete chapter and complete the exercises in it, Plan a time when you can and wait until then. Don't listen to small sections of this audiobook on the fly. That would probably give you enough information to make you anxious, but not enough to develop a plan. 2. Do each exercise as it comes up. If you're a perfectionist, or if you notice you keep putting the exercises off for a better time, or when you're in the mood, recognize this for what it is, anxiety and procrastination and allow yourself to do an imperfect job now. Better done than perfect. 3. Have a comfortable place to do your listening and writing, relatively free of noise and distraction. 4. Don't engage in other activities while you work with this audiobook. No eating, radio, or television in the background, or watching kids. 5. Expect that you will feel anxious. It involves a difficult topic for you, and it would be strange if you didn't feel any anxiety about it. Accept your feelings, and do the reading and exercises as best you can at that time. Thanks for listening to this excerpt from the audiobook, Panic Attacks Workbook, a guided program for beating the panic trick. You can purchase the complete audiobook from any major online audiobook retailer, If you'd like more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Please be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. And if you like the show, please rate it and review it. And please share it with friends who might also enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W-E-T-W-A-R-E-M-E-D-I-A dot com.